Let us pray. Dear God, King of glory, King of power, King of majesty, we come, God, just asking you to fill this place. Fill your holy servant, Lord, that I might speak those words that they need to hear. Open their ears and their hearts and their minds that they might receive what thus says the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So this morning's title is Morning Mercies. Morning Mercies. Now, let me make a confession about me and mornings. They don't, we, we don't get along too well. I have never, ever really been a morning person. I was telling Reverend Quick that as I was preparing for today and I was looking over pictures, I was looking at baby pictures, and I was always sleeping. <laughs> uh, and that has not really changed. I, I remember in high school when uh, my mom would come to wake me up, just five more minutes, five more minutes. She cut that light on and tell me to pull the covers off. Not pull them right back over. Cover up my head. Media, do you have a picture? Um, I was halfway in, halfway out, not really sure, you know, what, what, what we're going to do. And then I got on my own. I was in college, right? And then the snooze button was my friend then, right? It would go off, and I'd hit it once. And it'd go off again. And three, four, five times later, I was still laying in the bed. And now... Now as an adult, you know, we, they have this saying called adulting. You wake up, but you, you think about all the things you got to do that day. The kids you got to get up, get dressed, and so they can eat. The job you got to get to. And so you want to close your eyes. <laughs> You're staring up at the ceiling and you say, Lord, it, today? Today? And so... Mornings and I just don't get along. But in this morning's scripture, I have, I want to tell you about somebody who, who, who didn't get, to get along with mornings either. Um, this morning's scripture from Lamentations is actually a poem. Okay, it's, a, it's five chapters, five poems all together. And so this poem is believed to have been written by our friend Jeremiah who is one of the major prophets in the Old Testament. After he received his call from God, I, I think they called him the weeping prophet. He spent his entire life warning God's people about their transgressions against God and against man. They were serving idol gods, they were oppressing the poor, and many other social injustices. Now, whether this author is in fact Jeremiah or someone else, it is clear that this person had just experienced the total destruction of Jerusalem at the hands of the Babylonians. And if I were to imagine the scene, it's, it's morning, and I see Jeremiah perched on a hillside overlooking all the chaos and the rubble as the sun rises, trying to process the scene, the decaying bodies, the stench of death. A once proud people is now digging through the rubble for food. This was the tragedy that he had warned them of. This was the vision that he saw from God. So what now? What, what do we do now? Now, this is bigger than those momentary blues we talked about last week, right? Children are now without parents. Women are now without husbands. There is slavery. There is homelessness. And did I mention there was no food? And so as the author, Jeremiah, is looking over the scene, he must decide whether he will be Bitter or bitter free. He must decide whether he will rise to the occasion 
or roll over. Hit that snooze button one more time and throw the covers over his head because it's just, just too hard. So at this point in, in Lamentations, we've, we've talked about the fall. We've talked about God's wrath and his, his justice for their dis or disobedience. And now we're looking at the immense pain, the suffering that they're experiencing. In chapter 9, excuse me, verse 19, the author is remembering all of this hurt, right? All this pain, all this sorrow, but he says that it humbles him. Anybody ever been humbled by life's circumstances? Death of a loved one, disease, injury, sick child, and those are things outside of our control. What about the things that we can control? Broken relationships because we just didn't know how to treat folks. A lost job because we couldn't get our tails out the bed. Financial ruin because we tried to keep up with the Joneses. Either way, in our control, out of our control, can anybody relate? Can you relate to the weight of the world which is, oh, so heavy? The sorrow that is all around that is so immeasurable. And as our author remembers all these awful things, he still has hope. The text says, this I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning, great is, Thy faithfulness. Put another way, the author is saying these mercies are endless. They happen daily and they are new every morning. Each morning I wake up. Each morning you wake up, the mercies of God have been restored unto us. Even if you thought you'd used them all up the day before, guess what? They're still there. I imagine a honey pot, not, not filled with honey, but with mercy. I might use it up all day long, but guess what? The next morning, it is filled to the brim. So no matter how much hell you have created for your own life, or no, how, no much, how much hell you have found yourself in, God's mercy is always, always available. No matter whether you are old or young, doesn't get used up. Black, white, or other, it is always available. Real wrong, kind of wrong, dead wrong, yes, they are available for you too. I think about it like this. Yesterday's mercies were for yesterday's troubles. Today's mercies are for today's troubles. And tomorrow, because we all, we all imperfect, right? Tomorrow's mercies will be for tomorrow's troubles. Can, can I stay there just, just for a minute? No matter whatever the wrong, no matter the consequence, God's mercy is there. No matter the wrong, no matter the consequence, grace is still available for you. Now, mercy says that that failed relationship doesn't mean you'll be alone forever. Grace says that it is still hope for love in your life. Mercy says that the bankruptcy you filed because you were trying to keep up with the Joneses doesn't mean you will be broken homeless forever. Grace says there is still restoration for you. Mercy says that that job you lost because you couldn't get out of the bed doesn't mean you will always be jobless. And Grace kicks in and says, hey, you get a new job, maybe even better than the other one as long as you can get out of the bed. 
now as, I, as I'm thinking about this and really going back to this idea of mercy, I look at my children. That means that the mercy that is for me is for them too. That I have hope that the mercy that never fails, that honeypot I talked to you about, they got their own honeypot. And that the mercy that God has bestowed upon each and every one of us, our children, our idiot, the ones downstairs in children's church, that their lives will be able to, to still benefit from that same mercy. How many of us needed mercy? Anybody? Anybody need some mercy? Anybody wonder where they would have been without that mercy and that grace? You, you know, I mentioned to you that I'm not really a morning person, right? And, and this, this, this took a sister to the test, right? These morning mercies that I should really be waking up every morning just so happy, right? I hear some chuckles, right? But, but, but let's think about this. When we open our eyes and we think of the morning's mercies, when we understand that our past cannot consume us, that the sins and mistakes of yesterday we're already taken care of by yesterday's mercies. That I've woken up this morning and I know I'm, I'm going to make some more mistakes. There's a honeypot. Honeypot just waiting for me. And that tomorrow, because you know I'm, I ain't going to get it all right. Tomorrow, those sins, those mistakes as well, will be covered. Covered by mercy. And as I'm thinking about God's compassion that he shows to us every day, it is evidenced by this love for us that he would bestow daily mercy, daily grace. And you know, that, that love is just an extension of what he did over 2,000 years ago when he decided to give his only son to die for you and I. And then that son, that, that beloved Jesus Christ, that he came and lived just to die for us. That is love. That is compassion. Anybody glad about it? A anybody glad about it? Anybody glad that the morning is coming? Anybody glad that God, Jesus, died for our sins? The scripture says, great is thy faithfulness. That when we turned away, when we couldn't, couldn't get right, that he still loved us. That even in our mess, he still allowed grace and mercy. And so we thank you. And we are glad, we are glad about it. In the name of the Father, in the name of the precious and holy Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Amen.